the Arctic might soon become completely ice-free. And when all of the ice is gone, the world won't be the same. But what if I told you there was a way to prevent this from happening, and that we could do it by geoengineering some artificial icebergs? Over the last 30 years, the Arctic has lost almost all of its oldest, thickest ice. Now, 70% of the Arctic is covered with thin, seasonal ice caps that shrink in the summer and grow back in the winter. By some estimates, if the Earth continues to grow hotter, the Arctic could lose all its summer ice by the year 2030. And this would affect more than just the Arctic. The Arctic works as a global freezer, keeping the planet cool. Take all of that ice away, and the weather patterns around the globe would change in a very unpredictable way. But it doesn't have to end like this. We could step in and regrow some of the Arctic atmosphere. That would increase the global temperatures even further. The weather patterns across the planet would be sent off course, resulting in more floods, more droughts, and more heat waves, guys. But how exactly would we go about it? The answer lies in geoengineering. We could bring the ice back to the Arctic with the help of huge wind-powered pumps, 10 million of them to be precise. The pumps would spread seawater onto the glaciers, where it would freeze and form a new layer of ice. Over one Arctic winter, the pumps would add another meter of thickness to the ice caps. But this would come with a price tag of $500 billion. And even though that's less than 1% of the world's gross domestic product, some governments might consider the price too high. But there are other ways. The polar ice keeps the planet cool by reflecting the sun's energy back into space rather than absorbing it. This is known as the albedo effect. We could help the young Arctic ice to reflect more sunlight by covering it with small, shiny silica microspheres. These powder-like microbeads aren't toxic and their chemical and physical properties are similar to sand. It would cost us just $300 million to sprinkle 25,000 square kilometers of the Arctic, but that would only cover less than 1% of all the ice there. And we're talking about dumping millions of tons of silica over the Arctic that would sink to the bottom of the ocean when the ice melted. We don't know yet what ecological impact it might cause over time. Would you want to risk losing the Arctic before performing more tests? I didn't think so. We could leave the ice alone and try cutting off the sun's rays by using the clouds, but they would have to be very thick to reflect the sunlight efficiently enough. This could be solved by seeding the clouds above the Arctic with droplets of salt water. All we'd have to do is figure out how to deliver an ultra-fine seawater mist into the lower atmosphere. Or we could go further and start growing icebergs. First, we'd dip submarines below the surface of the ocean and fill a tank with seawater. An onboard desalination system would remove the salt from the water and then a giant freezing machine would form icebergs 5 meters thick and 25 meters wide. But despite how cool it sounds, the amount of energy required to power the operation and the heat it would release might negate any benefits of restoring the Arctic ice. So should we even bother trying? We could just quietly watch the Arctic lose its ice to climate change until eventually there wouldn't be any ice left at all. As temperatures rose, the Arctic permafrost would melt and release more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Some scientists even believe that the ice-free Arctic would bring harsher winter to Europe and North America. And who knows what else could happen? Without ice to rest on, polar bears would be forced to swim around instead of conserving their energy during times when food can be hard to find. That would result in their population dropping to less than 10,000 by 2050. It would be fantastic if we could refreeze the Arctic. We should at least try to refreeze a small portion of it. 
But that would only be a temporary bandage if we continue doing the things that caused the ice to melt in the first place. It really comes down to us making a collective effort to switch to renewable energy sources and energy efficient appliances, to cut back on the amount of meat we eat, to stop throwing food away, to reduce water waste, and to buy electric or at least fuel efficient cars. It's up to us to help our planet. And if that's not enough, remember that you have a right to demand policies that reflect climate science. Together, we could undo climate change globally before it's too late. And if we don't start acting now, we might have to leave the Earth and search for another planet to call home. But that's a story. Can the North and South Poles be refrozen? Scientists have suggested plans to save Antarctic glaciers and Arctic sea ice by refreezing them. According to Reuters, scientists believe the West Antarctic ice sheet is on course to disintegrate due to the effects of global warming. This would trigger a global sea level rise that would leave many coastal cities, such as New York, underwater. To prevent this from happening, a new study published in Science Advances has proposed using 12,000 wind turbines to pump seawater to the surface, turn it into artificial snow, and then pump it onto two glaciers in the West Antarctic coast. According to study co-author Anders Leverman, it would take 7.4 trillion tons of snow over a 10-year period to result in a 2-centimeter drop in sea level, though the artificial snow would weigh the glaciers down and improve stability. Other research suggests warm water currents may be melting the glaciers from the bottom up, prompting an idea to construct giant sills or underwater mounds to prevent the water from seeping under the ice shelves. CNBC reports that Arizona State University physicist Stephen Desch has similar refreezing plans for the Arctic. His Arctic ice management strategy calls for the use of wind-powered pumps to spray water to the surface of sea ice, where it would freeze and thicken the ice cap. Many scientists believe the consequences of global warming are already inevitable, and when they do occur, just turning down the temperature won't cut it. Since efforts to curb this problem aren't keeping pace with the Paris Agreement, Desch suggests it's time to start looking into unconventional options. from Down Under. I'm having a bit of an off day, uh, but I just wanted to show this uh, briefly. Here goes this, the, the, the North Pole. And 
let's just uh, go up and we can see all of this area here. This is within, I would say, uh, maybe 600 kilometers of the pole. And you can see how it's, it's breaking up and here. It's not exactly crystal clear, um, but you can see kind of what's happening. So I don't really see too many signs of a um, of the uh, the refreezing that everyone's sort of talking about. Um, yeah, the sun hasn't yet disappeared, but it'll be very low in the sky, and this is how it looks. So there's a lot of cloud, uh, but there are a few areas of um, clear sky which enable us to see what the true position uh, This is uh, the sea ice thickness over the last uh, 30 days going into uh, a prediction forecast period. So uh, I find it really hard to uh, tell anything from those GIFs because they're far too quick. So I've just extracted this and this is uh, the 21st of August, uh, the thickness. And this is the latest data that's available. Um, on the 5th of September. Uh, now I, again, I can't, it, it's very hard to compare. So what I've done is this, uh, so you've got the 21st of August on the top, so on the left, and you've got um, the 5th of September uh, on the right. Now if I have a look at that, it doesn't really, there's been a lot of talk about refreeze and uh, quite frankly, I don't see it. So I just did this uh, rough uh, markup and uh, this shows more or less uh, what you would see on NASA Worldview if it weren't for the cloud cover. So essentially what I've done is a very rough markup and this is how uh, things uh, would be looking. They, this is the true area of uh, sea ice extent that's left. Uh, this area is full of slush, it's very thin, there are lots of holes in it. Um, so had the cyclone happened just a few weeks earlier than it did, I would suspect that all of this ice uh, would have gone. So um, some people might be correct in saying we've been saved by another year. Well, I don't quite see it in those terms. So if you compare it with that, this is what uh, the National uh, Snow and Ice Center Data Center are saying is the... Um, is the sea ice extent. 